Hey, welcome back to the channel. Well, lately I've been hearing a lot from engineers that they have been applying for job after job only to hit nothing but rejection or sometimes not even rejections. They don't even hear back. And I totally get it. I've been there. It's so frustrating. Why do companies do this? So today I am excited to share the insider tips on how to optimize your resume from a big tech hiring manager's perspective. I'm going to teach you three big ideas on resumes that schools never teach you about but more importantly, you're going to learn why the right kind of experience is a key here. And it's not about just listing projects that are going to give you unfair advantage. This is something that a lot of people really overlook. So first of all, let's talk about keywords. This should really be a top priority for you when you're writing resumes. I'm going to be encouraging you to think from the hiring manager's perspective throughout the video. I am a retired hiring manager with almost 20 years of experience, including roles at Meta as both a software engineer and a hiring manager. And now that I'm retired, I've been making YouTube videos to get back to the next generation in tech. So imagine you're looking at hundreds, sometimes thousands of resumes to fill one role. All you probably want to do is to get through them as quickly as possible because each resume is usually at least one page long. So hundreds, or thousands of pages, that's a lot of reading. And that's why they use the ATS scanners is the first line of filter. And I'm going to talk more extensively about the ATS scanners in a bit. Which brings me to my next point. Let me ask you this. What is the best pizza topping? Is it pepperoni, mushrooms, pineapple, or maybe even olives? We all have our favorites, right? And that's sort of how hiring managers are thinking when it comes to resume. They are scanning for the keywords that they're looking for. And one of the biggest mistakes that people make on their resume is to have too much irrelevant information. And whenever I explain this, one of the common questions that I always get is, how long should my resume be? And my answer is always that it should be one page. And here's the thing. It's not about cramming every single skill and every single thing that you have done into the page, but it's more about showcasing the right skills for the job. Think quality over quantity. When your resume is just packed with irrelevant information, it does three things. One, it makes it harder for the hiring managers to see why you're the right fit because all the extra fluff kind of dilutes your strengths. Two, it slows them down. Again, it's too much reading. And three, it can distract them from what really matters and what really makes you stand out from the rest of the crowd. So having too much information is not helping you at all. Just because you know JavaScript, Python, and Go, it doesn't mean you need to list every single one of them. Focus on what is relevant for the role that you're applying to. So how do you know what is relevant? Well, you gotta first start out by identifying the target role, then you can find the right keywords to include in your resume. And you can kind of think of it as giving your hiring manager the exact pizza topping that they are looking for. So they want to move you to the next step, which is the interview process. So if you're not really sure which keywords go with which role, don't worry about it. I got another video that breaks it down based on my research, analyzing many real job postings. I'll link it somewhere here. Now, speaking of research, if you've been following my channel, you know that my superpower is really research. Recently, I analyzed 80 job postings and found that for AI roles, there were an average of 420 applicants. For junior software engineering roles, that number shot up to 728 applicants. And I'm sharing these numbers to let you know that there's just no way that the hiring manager can talk to every single candidate that comes through the application pipeline. So how are you going to help the hiring managers narrow down the pool of the application. First filter really is the ATS scanner. And honestly, it's pretty simple. If you're not familiar with ATS, that is a software that big tech companies normally use to streamline their hiring process. And I do take a deeper dive into how to optimize your engineering resume for ATS in my book, The Ultimate Resume Handbook. But in case you can't afford the $20 for the book, I also have a free one page PDF on my website so you can download the checklist for free for future reference. Here's a quick rundown of the do's and don'ts, which is in the PDF. Don't use the Things like Photoshop or Canva or other graphic editors because ATS might struggle with complex design. Also avoid colors or highlights. 
keep it clean and simple. Don't use tables, footers, headers, or images, or emojis. All of these can confuse the ATS. Never ever use columns because ATS might read them out of order, not knowing that these are columns. And also skip symbols. Instead, you do want to stick to Google Docs or Words. You do want to save your resume as a PDF to preserve the formatting. Keep the margins consistent, starting with one inch everywhere. But if you need more space, you can go ahead and reduce it to half an inch to maximize the space. But make sure to keep it consistent in all sides. Always want to use the right keywords. This is chapter one of the resume handbook. If you want to go check it out, as I said earlier, keep it to one page and stick to basic fonts like Arial or Times New Roman and also keeping it around 11 to 12 points makes it easier to read. Again, I'm reading hundreds of resumes. I don't want to be squinting my eyes to read. Something that a lot of people do miss, I notice, is the standardized date format. There are a couple different ways you can do this and the specific examples are included in the book. Same with the standard section headings. Use things like experience or skills so that ATS can categorize your information correctly. Okay, enough about ATS scanners. What is the next big goal for your resume? You want to make the hiring manager feel comfortable and trust you enough to give you a shot at the interview. I'm sure you've experienced the intense multiple rounds of interviews for tech companies and it's pretty exhausting for one candidate, right? It's also a big time commitment from the company's perspective. It's multiple hours of engineering time that the interviewers could have spent on coding and solving problems that they're instead spending to assess you as a potential employee. And the company does this because hiring the wrong person can be a huge headache. It's not just the salary that they're wasting, but there's also losing out on hiring someone else that could have worked out. If they need to let you go, it's expensive. And it also means they have to restart the whole hiring process all over again. Plus all the time that they're gonna have to spend on training you will be wasted. They want to avoid all of this headache. By the time they finish reading your resume, they should have some confidence that yes, this person is worth interviewing. So how do you make sure your resume leaves them feeling that way? Now, according to the 2023 Future of Jobs report, companies care mostly about three things. One is your past work, two is your skills, then your education. Why is that? Because even if you have a fancy CS degree or previous work experience, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're ready for the job. They still need to test your skills. But if you manage to stick around in a past role for a long enough time and if you weren't fired right away, you're probably competent. Not always, but usually. If you're an experienced software engineer, pick the relevant work experience and use bullet points that show impact of your past work. Again, I explain all of this in the Ultimate Resume Handbook. So go check out the chapter on crafting impactful work experience bullet points. But if you're a junior engineer, how can you help the hiring managers feel like it's gonna be worth their time to talk to you? Earlier in the video, I mentioned that the secret is not building projects. And the reason why projects don't really count as much is because there's a big difference between production ready code and virtual or personal code that doesn't really have real users. If you are a junior engineer, it's sort of like a chicken and egg problem, right? To land your first role, you need previous experience. But how do you get previous experience when you're looking for your first role? Well, lucky for you, I have a video explaining exactly what you should do. I explain the seven different strategies that you can take. So if that's you, go watch that video right here. Otherwise, YouTube thinks that you should be watching this one next. I'll see you there.